remember when I said this? Trying to convince Meg to make a trommel with me. And then remember when I said this? Like it's a great plan and idea and stuff, but we're gonna spend a week trying to come up, like come up with a design and execute that and then something's not gonna work right and then we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board and like three, four times until we have something that works and we've spent $500 and I don't know. It sounds exhausting. So here we are, we're finally doing it. Uh, we actually have been doing it. If you notice, we didn't do an episode last week. That's because we failed on our first and second attempt of making a trommel out of kind of things we found around our property. And we'll show you some of that footage now. We just didn't want to show you that in the episode and just show you our failures and then ultimately do it good. Yeah, we, we did a lot of scavenging around the property and the way that we did it would have worked, but it probably would have fallen apart after some use. Self-destruction. And the other thing I want to do, I stopped myself from kind of rigging things together because I want this video to be, um, for you to be able to follow along with what I'm doing and go out and buy the supplies that you need, which is not very expensive. You don't need a lot of money to put something like this together. We are building a trauma. We have a lot of gravel here that we are unearthing from an area on our property that contains limestone. This limestone is perfect road-based material and that's what we're after. Our driveway is going to be 2,000 feet long and the amount of material we didn't want to order that from a quarry. So we want to use what we have and it's difficult to just pick up by hand. We're getting nowhere doing that. So what we're going to do is just grab material which includes the soil and the material we're after, send it through the trommel. This trommel will spin and it'll have holes and screens in it and uh, it will drop out the fine stuff and it'll spit out the, the gravel. Good stuff. And hopefully we'll have a loader or a trailer or something like that at the end of it. It'll just deposit those and then we could cart them away. So it should speed things up and uh, make, make it a lot easier to uh, obtain what we're after. So. Yeah. Here's where we are so far. We got two steel drums. These are, I guess, known as burn barrels, whatever you call them. 55 gallons. Yeah, and when you buy these, make sure you get two of the same. Don't, don't just go to the store and order two and have them throw it in your car. Make sure that the lips are the same because I picked up this one and I picked up another one. It's like one fit into the other one. They so make match. sure that you get it within a half inch and you should be fine. So these we picked up at Rural King, they're 20 bucks a piece. Okay. 23. 23 and a quarter. Mm. That's about the same. Whatever, eighth inch off. Um, right now I'm going to cut the bottom of each barrel off. This is not very absorbent. I'm going to cut the bottom off. And then I'm going to weld them both together. Man, it's a cool color. Came out really good. I need a symbol. That is, that worked great with the CNC router. I always keep these around the shop. They're uh, old radio magnets, and I just not radio. Uh, Speaker magnets. They're good to just hold screws. 
or clean up stuff like this. Stack them up. Get needs to sit the same. We're gonna be tricky. Oh. Well, damn. type thing. And it's always the easy parts that you think it's always the things you think are gonna be easy. Those are the ones that kick you in the face. tacked up. Better. I'm gonna try my hardest to show you what it looks like under my welding helmet. So yeah I know a lot of you weld but a lot of you don't so this is an auto darkening helmet. And what that means is that as soon as it detects a bright light, it shades the viewing glass. Hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna stick the lens through it and try to look through the other side and make a little weld right there. So, oh, uh, this might be tricky. Okay. See, that's basically what I see. It's all green and stuff. You line up where you're going. I'm doing this left-handed with one eye, so... See? There we go. We just did... which one? That one. I hope that came through. Because, uh... That was not easy. Let's do it again, just for a safe measure. Let's, uh... I just need some work over here. Let's try to plant that down, sort of. Right, we're gonna go right next to uh, the vice grips. Okay, you come with me, come under the glass. Okay, hopefully you can see that. We're gonna go right next to the vice grips here. Okay, right now. As soon as I pull the trigger, it'll start firing. All right, let's do another one. I really can't see what I'm doing, guys. I'm using my left eye. All right, let's see. Uh, all right, that was pretty bad, but you get the idea. That's what it looks like under a welding helmet. So basically there's a little trigger right here and then there's this uh, flux wire. And as soon as you hit that trigger, watch the flux wire. See, it dispenses it. And what that does is it, you know, will detect the ground. And as soon as those two make contact, when you pull the trigger, see if you do this, nothing's gonna happen until you hit the trigger. So, all right. Okay, Meg said Come with me. she has a surprise for me. I can't really hear her. Let me take out my earplugs. Oh. It took me about 20 minutes to put in the car by myself. What? Big? Yeah. No one helped you? Nobody helped me. Really? No. Wow. Surprise. Usually, usually someone will come and help, but nobody helped. But I got it done. What'd you buy? I didn't buy anything. Oh. I'm great about it. Did you find something? Find something on the side of the road? No, it wasn't on the side of the ah. road. What'd you get? Whoa. 
What? Is it a wel welding table? What, what's going on here? Well, I thought it could be the legs for our trommel. Whoa. Where did you get this? It was in the pre-wood pile. Really? At Royal King, yeah. Holy cow. That's awesome. Great find, right? Yeah. Autumn nice. sweater, so I don't... I kind of cut the uh, roof of the car, the ceiling fabric. But... Why don't you get Chuck? I'm sure Chuck was busy. Oh, please. I managed. I can do it. You put this in here alone? I did. Wow, Meg. This seat is so far forward. <coughs> should have taken my truck. I should have taken your truck. I was looking for your truck. Dude. I loaded that all by myself. Then, nice, Meg. I didn't know if this would be helpful, but I, I mean, just to have some square. Like, this is just free. I mean, yeah. Wow. Look what Meg got. Look at this thing. I should have carried it like this. Oh yeah. You guys need a Meg. My wife gets out of the car and gets this hunk of junk in the back of the Jeep. What'd your wife do today? Yeah. Meg, good job. Meg's studying our uh, building code book right now. Making notes. Anyway. Yeah! All right. Let's go get the barrels. Let's see what it looks like on here. Oh, this should be fun. What in the, it's like exactly the same length, Meg. <laughs> All we gotta do is mount our wheels on here. We'll be spinning in no time. Whew. All right, I gotta level this thing. It wants to roll off here. Let's shove a rock in there real quick and take a look. Now, you're gonna start seeing things come together. So, all right, cool. I got my platform here. So we're gonna weld some uh, casters in a couple different places. We'll probably weld a few on the ends too, so it can't slide off. We're gonna need to set this thing. I say I'm gonna build it level. I'm gonna build it level, and then when I get it to the site where I want it, I feel like I'm gonna lift up the edge that I want the material to come out. Maybe not, I don't know. We'll see. Is we're gonna mount the trommel so the cylinder goes this way. And the reason we're doing that, it overhangs a little bit. Everything seemed to line up a little bit better. Um, so what we're gonna do is have the trommel, it's gonna take up about this much space, and then have the wheel mounted here, and then it gives us all this room to have the uh, engine mounted too. Um, so next step here is to mount these casters. These are pretty cheap, got them at Harbor Freight for like two or three dollars each. I think I picked up about nine of them. Um, I know I need four, we'll see how many more we need, but those will get mounted right there. I'm just gonna hit them with the welder real quick. So we'll put the first four down and then see how this thing spins. have this, the frame, kept it as is. And uh, hopefully we can keep it that way. We have the trouble on one side and all over here is gonna be our pulleys and engine. Um, we broke up the other section that Meg brought home and there, there's a number of pieces that are just angle iron. There's some square tubing here. Um, yeah, so this is all good quality stuff that we could just use and it really didn't cost us anything. Let me show you now the other components that we're gonna use to get this whole thing together. Okay, we got ourselves a gasoline engine. We picked this up at Harbor Freight for just over $100. It's brand new, 79cc, not too strong, but it's a gasoline engine. And we put a drive pulley right on here. You can see it's like a V-groove pulley, three inches, and it takes a V-belt. 
So this engine spins maximum at 3,600 RPM. No way on this earth will this barrel move at 3,600 RPM, so we have to figure out a way to slow this thing down. All right, the other stuff we bought, we bought some uh, bolts to use as shafts, but we bought two different size tires. We got a 10 inch solid rubber tire and this like four ish inch tire. We're gonna be removing this and we're gonna be using these as pulleys. We're gonna send the belts from the engine to these and transfer the rotating ultimately to this trommel. Um, and then we got these, we need three belts too. So we had one from our sawmill we're gonna repurpose. And then we bought two other ones at a particular size after some measurements. So let's get going. Let's start mounting all this stuff and then we'll show you how it's actually working. Draw you a picture of our plan. This is our trommel, our barrels. And here's our base. Oops. Oops. And we have two sets of pulleys. So we have one set, a 10 inch, four inch, and then we have a 10 inch, a four inch, and we have our engine that has a shaft with a three inch pulley. This set is on an axle and connected. This set is on an axle and connected. Then, the belts are gonna start at the engine, go from here over here, and then this pulley is gonna move this pulley, and then this belt is gonna go from here to here, and move this pulley, which is gonna move this pulley, and then a belt's gonna go from here and around the trommel. And then also in addition to that, we're gonna have a idler pulley right here that is only going to serve the purpose of pushing down on this belt to tighten it. This set of pulleys here is gonna be on movable tracks so it can move this way and it can move this way to tighten this belt and help tighten this belt. And also the engine further is going to have its own mounting plate which will have movable sections as well. So this belt can be tightened, this belt can be tightened, and this belt will be tightened by the idle. Cool, Meg. Why are we involving yeah. so many pulleys? Because we have to slow down the trommel. Yeah. If we were to set this up, we learned this last week during our trial and error, if we were to put a belt strictly from here to here, this would run at 36 RPM, which no, 3,600. I'm sorry, yeah, 3,600 RPM, and we would have rocks flying Actually, everywhere. Actually, it would slow it down, because it is essentially a larger pulley. Yes. This, it's a bigger it, Yeah, it would this be is, slower, it, but not just, nearly slow enough. No, 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 no. So that's our plan. Bad things would happen. All right, let's get to it. Okay. We determined the best thing to do is to put the engine on this side. This will be the loading side, where we'll put our material into and the rocks would spit out that way. So we found it more convenient to have the engine here so when you want to start it or you need to do an emergency stop it would be right here by the operator. Um, so the engine's going to be here, it's going to go back to a set of pulleys and then another set of pulleys over here and ultimately that set will go around the trommel. So we're going to do some welding and mounting but we're going to be building this thing backwards. So instead of mounting the engine then the pulley then the pulley, we're going to start with this pulley to the next pulley and then back to the engine just so that we get our belts nice and tight. Oh, okay. Is that a good glide? Yeah, much better. Oh, it's a lot easier on some cold for you. What tool would you have grabbed? This? Yeah, sounds good, honey. Really? Yeah, sure. I thought you were gonna laugh at me. Why? Oof, sorry. I like old school tools. Nice. Yeah! Boom! What's up, Polly? That looks like a V groove Polly. It looks exactly like a V groove. Those uh, were twenty bucks, these? but that tire was ten. Yeah, if we were to buy just the pulley. Oh. 
Yeah. It was 20 bucks, but the tire with the pulley was 10 bucks. Well, that's a bearing. This is the pulley. Okay. <laughs> well, we needed the bearing. All right, so we got one pulley. Good to go. All right, let's get the other one. Ready. All right. That should be good. The belt is going to go inside of this groove here. We're going to use this as is. It was a six inch tire. A uh, six inch wheel with offset steel hub. Okay. Those are ready. So now that six inch tire is going to be considered as a four inch pulley. All right, now with these, we like this diameter, here to here, we like that. So what we're gonna do, knowing that these are solid from what we saw with the other tire, I'm gonna get this thing on the drill press, get it spinning, and then carve a little groove in here so the belt can rest it somewhere. How are you gonna spin that on the drill press? We'll see. Yeah, it worked pretty good. Oh, oh yeah. Like a glove. Look at that. That's perfect. Yeah. Now we have to do the other one. All right. So this is essentially what we're doing on the uh, on the trommel. So these are pulleys. The drive, the motor for this thing is in the very back. So depending on where you put it, this is probably, let me think here, this would be the slowest rotation on this thing because it has the smallest pulley on the bottom and then it's applying the force to the output pulley on the front which spins the uh, shaft of the drill press. So when you go from small to big, you're gonna slow down the speed. When you go from big to small, you're gonna increase the speed. Cool. This pulley all has the same RPMs regardless of the uh, diameter of what you're putting the belt in. But then, if it's smaller, it's gonna go faster. If it goes to a bigger pulley, it's gonna slow it down from what this RPM is. Oh. These two are gonna be mount, this is gonna be the axle for both of these. They spin freely. Ooh, but they're gonna have to be tied together too. Well, the axle is this bolt, this eight inch bolt. Then we took a piece of half inch conduit at two and a half inches then we put on the other pulley and that's spaced but now we got to merge these together we got to marry these together so when this gets driven it's driving this at the same rotation so what we're going to do is take these bolts now and get them in position prime everything and just get these in position basically on opposite sides and uh and weld them We're getting really smart now. Are we? Yeah. Can I, I can shave those off when we're done, right? Exactly. See, John had it like this. Our spacer. And he said, and then I'll weld here and I'll weld there. And I said, how about you just do this? Isn't that easier? Yeah, we could get just go And trying to figure out the height. Man, that was, that was impressive. I'm impressed. Sometimes I have good ideas. Sometimes. Okay, so, thread that through. I'm putting the axle on now so that these things will be parallel with each other. Okay, well, I gotta do it Meg's way. I'm doing three per wheel. One, two. All right. 
Bingo. Let's hold this. Sweet. I think that works pretty good. Oops. See the yeah, the shear on it is pretty nice too. I figured I mean nails are strong. You don't leave the nails sharp like that, like they're uh No, I'm not gonna kill myself. Like the, the truckers have with the spikes. <laughs> I like that. Alright, I'm gonna finish up this welding. Now I don't want to- Watch your boots, Mick! I don't care about my boots. The, I, I don't want to get it on it the- It doesn't matter. On the bearing? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Now, Meg, you have an art degree. Yep. Okay, so we got the right person for the job. Maybe. It's been a while. Fun fact. John and I met in painting class. Perhaps we should drill these out first. Okay. So it'll give us the center. So we put some spacers. I think we only need one, one on each side here. Get one. And then put one on the other side just so it doesn't matter. If you hear ferrets in the background, that's just our children. You think they sound like ferrets? I don't know what they sound like. <laughs> cool. All right. All right, so this last one, we're building it backwards. We are building it from the trommel to the last pulley to the first pulley to the engine. So, <laughs> and the reason we're doing that, this last one is going to require some, uh, it's going to require like an idler to press down on it to create that last bit of um, friction so it can turn the trommel. Because we got a belt going this way and we got a belt going that way. To have them both tight is going to be nearly impossible. So we're going to leave this one loose and when we want to get the trommel going, we'll just apply pressure to it with, by some means. We're not sure with what yet.
mounting the second pulley now. I did the first one, it's pretty much tacked on there. Now I gotta mount the second one. But my idea, get this pencil on here. I like having a pull pencil. My idea is I'm gonna put it here. And of course I'll cut these two parallel bars here. But this belt goes from that large one to this small one and it needs to have tension. Um, weather changes, uh, belt stretches out over time, so it'd be great if the mounts on this thing, if these bars were movable, like this, back and forth. So instead of welding those in place, I'm gonna mount a couple screws on the frame itself so that these things can move backward and forward, respectively, and um, be able to adjust that in case we need to add a little bit of tension to this guy. And here. All right, that's what that's gonna be. Good. And then this thing's gonna get mounted here, just to give this guy a little bit of wiggle room. I'm gonna have a bolt mounted here. All right, so we're gonna have a screw here and it's gonna go through a hole here, but it's gonna be a slotted hole. So this thing can move this way and that way on the other side too. So that is the goal here. Let's see, I've got this roughly in position. Let's, uh... All right, now all we gotta do is set this down, put this guy, parallel with it and get the holes lined up. Probably should get a shaft through there to make sure that everything's lined up correctly. That's a good tack. And what I did is I went, I started in the corner, then I just went up and down, up and down, up and down, just a little bit, instead of just holding it right there in the corner. When you hold it in the corner, I think you get a little glob that comes out so you're trying to like spread the puddle along the perpendicular planes here not the planes the faces so that worked pretty good just thought i'd share i'm a pro now i guess now we need to cut grooves in this guy and i think instead of doing slotted holes like can you see this hole right here how it's uh, like a drill bit on each end and then a straight line between it instead of doing it that way like an elongated oval i'm going to um i think just drill it wherever i think the end should be and then i'm going to cut all the way to that spot and the same thing over here so to install it you'll have to like you have to put this bar down like that and then it can't go it, it can't come off. It's hard to explain. Okay, 
Good. Now it's loose. Now let's disassemble this. I gotta weld all this. I better be careful. All right. Um. Let's. Go get the other belt. Uh, where'd it go? Here we go. All right, one more V belt. It's a 64 inch. I'll show you how to figure out what belt sizes you need, but there's a calculator online you could use. Pretty reliable. All right, that one's in the right spot now, okay. All right, that's the engine plate. Engine gets mounted in these four holes from up underneath, and then these screws are gonna be sticking down, and I'm gonna have the frame some holes or slots, if you wanna call them that. So now the engine will be able to go this way or this way, and then from underneath we'll just ta um, tighten it down. So it's gonna be the same bolt as the other mounts. So we just need one nine sixteenths on hand to adjust everything here. Right there. Right here. That's gonna be slick. Then I'm gonna come in with a plate and it's gonna go flush against that guy. That's cool. All right. Uh, it's about an inch from there. That'd be perfect, right there. Engine has these screws on the bottom and they're gonna go here somewhere. Let's check our belt. Belt. Slip over the pulley here, and then the engine can slide to the left or to the right, whatever it needs to get tight or loose. Okay, very exciting moment here, guys. Hooking up the engine. All right, got a couple washers and a few nuts. See if it fits. And I caught myself on fire, look at that. This is beyond dumb. Okay. See my mount? Okay. This is gonna go here. Oh. Right, let's get the washers and nuts on loose. Now all we gotta do is give it a pull back and you still have, let's see, all right. what I'm expecting. I'm expecting to start the engine 
and for it to turn this and for it to turn this we might have a little movement here but I don't expect this thing to roll just yet gonna need a uh, tension pulley to apply a little bit of downward force so that we can remove that and turn the trommel on and off essentially it's the moment of truth we have let's see the engine mount I love it Isn't that cool it's beautiful thanks all right, we're gonna put it to you did great. start on turtle. turtle. Start on turtle. I'm gonna pull the thing back and you're gonna get one of these tight like this one and then this one okay. I would like probably try to just tighten it by hand first and then get that thing on there it's already ready to tighten okay I might have to um, cut this tire just a little bit more, a little deeper. Yeah, What? why did this come off? Because I probably didn't tighten it. Oh, well, maybe we should do that. Yeah. Oh, I'm tired. I've been doing a lot of welding today. Grinding, cutting, all that stuff. I caught on fire. All right, so I took a caster wheel okay one of these simple things that you could get okay and i took the rubber off and it kind of made like a little idler pulley and what i mean by idler pulleys they just spin freely on their own okay so i did a little calculating and this is the last part we need tension right here so that it applies the force from this pulley to the final well big pulley the trommel and i put a piece of angle iron here and a piece of angle iron here then i welded on a bolt like i've been doing this whole episode and now we're gonna test fit that's brilliant all right and i put the angle iron on there so we only have to mess with one bolt oh you know what i forgot the washer can you hand me that washer down there? Mm -hmm. Thank there you. you. I didn't check the fit of the washer. Okay, good. So the angle iron, hopefully it'll, you know, keep it pretty much. It's okay if it jiggles around a little bit, but I didn't want it twisting and falling off. And if I were to guess, this thing is going to get pushed back. Like it starts like this, but it'll get pushed back this way and then it'll just stay there. Mm -hmm. So, and this is the same size bolt. See, now what we could do is just put it down as tight as we want it to. Mm -hmm. And then and then bolt it down. That's And everything's out of the way. That's great. That's okay. so much simpler than any design I was thinking of. So, let's get this thing going, and then I'll tighten this thing down while it's running. Should have been an engineer, John. Okay. Let's go on. Start. Halfway. One little oops, Meg. 
What? When I mounted the when engine, you caught yourself I, mount, on fire? I mounted it to the movable frame. So I'm going to have to get this off and then just mount it somewhere uh, else. Whoops. Yeah, it's okay. I'm just going to, um, I'll probably just put another piece of metal here to here and then just raise it up a little bit. Hmm. I'm not worried about it right now. I just want to test this thing yeah. and check the proof of concept. Damn, we're off too soon. I shut it off and then one and then one of the rocks fell out. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna work. Yeah. It just did. I mean, I think a few popped out. Well, there's probably is, sand in there though. This is what we're trying to get, guys. Just that is absolutely perfect material. That's gonna be great. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's gonna work really good. That's what we want. I can't wait for tomorrow. John, you have birds as background. Okay. Tell us about your system. Are we going? Yeah. Okay, I wanted to take a minute to actually explain my thinking behind this whole thing. When you go from a small pulley to a large pulley, and then you go, you know, small to large, small to large, it decreases the RPM dramatically every single time. And there's math and physics behind this whole thing, but to show you what I'm talking about, this is where it begins. So we know this pulley here is 3600 RPM, and I want to show you the surface area or the circumference of this uh, pulley. It's about, I mean, just ballpark, okay? Right there is the length of that three inch pulley. Now, when that length gets applied to this larger pulley, see one rotation of this small pulley travels this far on the surface of this 10 inch pulley. So this is approximately, I mean, call that about a quarter of its surface. This would have to turn four times or that this would have to turn four times to get this thing to turn once, approximately, just ballpark, because it was about this long. So that is the whole thing. And once you do that from here to here, now we have a set. So this set is the RPM on it. Once this slope is applied here, it the RPM of these are going to be the same. So then you do the same thing. We have a small pulley going back to a big pulley and then we do it one more time. We have a small pulley and then we treat the trommel itself as the big pulley. So I did the math for you. So this engine starts at 3,600 RPM. That's the maximum RPM, by the way. When it spins in its full speed, it goes to this pulley and transfers everything at a speed now of 1,080 RPM. Then, it comes from this little one to this big one, and the big one applies it to the little one again, and it steps it down to 432 RPM. And then finally, it goes to this larger pulley, the trommel, which is a huge 24 inch diameter, and that makes it spin at 72 RPM. My goal was to get this thing somewhere between, I really wanted to have one revolution a second, so it'd be about 60 RPM. Now remember, that is the max RPM, 3600. I did a little math, and the idle speed of this engine is about half that, so it's about 1800 RPM, so if we step that down, we're in the range of like 40 RPM on the trommel at the end of it. So. The way to calculate these things, you could easily just go to blocklayer.com. They have a really good calculator. Just you type in the pulley, the speed of the pulley and the diameters, and it'll tell you the output RPM. Um, or you could use the equation. We'll show it on the screen. It is the small pulley's speed times the diameter divided by the output diameter of this pulley. And it'll tell you what this speed would be. So I hope you followed that along. Um, we'll have everything in the description of the uh, episode. So essentially you take 3,600 yep. from there and times it by three and then divide by 10. Times three, yes. And then take that answer and divide it by 10. And, and that you'll gives get you the, the output RPM. RPM here, which would give you, I think, 1080. Mm -hmm. All right, so then you do that. Then these are the same RPM. Now you have a small pulley at 1080 RPM and you go to the big pulley of, of 10 inches and you go down the line until you ultimately get it where you need to. So you can mess with these diameters to get whatever you want. Um, what do we have left to do, John? After all that, physics is fun. So last thing we've got to do is cut some holes and put some screen in this guy and then we're gonna go get it to work. So 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna cut this up. We're gonna mount some screen, and then we're gonna get this thing up in the trommel and, or up in the uh, quarry, and we're gonna give this thing a shot. Harbor Freight, okay? This cheap little grinder thing. Oh yeah, and by the way guys, I got a, I got a grinder with a guard now, so no more yelling at me. And this switch, when you start using it, it vibrates a little bit, it goes boop, and it just turns the thing off. I really hate it. So, mm-mm. keeps things interesting. <laughs> no, let's move it. Yeah? Yeah. Here, put it outside. John's pro tips of the day. Wet chalk, because your kids don't put their toys away, marks up some steel barrels really well. And you can see it when you're cutting. Looks like mustard. <coughs> All of a sudden it started smelling different. Why? Different barrel. Food grade, non-food grade. Huh. Ugh. Interesting. John's pro tip, get food grade. Yeah, pro tip. We got this all cut up and I quickly just hit it with a flap wheel to get it down to the middle all the way around. We're gonna get this thing in the shed now. We're gonna get some wire on it, weld it up, and we will be done and ready to test it out. Let's, um, this is what I got. I got it from Royal King, just some cage wire. Uh, let's see, one by two, and if I were to guess, it's like a, well, we got this stuff too, but I don't think we're gonna use it. This is a half inch mesh, this is 19 gauge. I would imagine this thing is like, man, 15 or 16. I don't know how they calculate gauges, but so this is a one by two opening. We're going to do this across the whole thing. I think the one half mesh was just going to be way too fine and not going to be very effective. So, all right. Let's see, I'm worried. Mm. Let's put a few more on, get the hang of it. Well, you just gotta be careful, really. Careful you're not zapping off the wire like I did right there. Okay, so I went ahead and welded this thing on the outside. You're probably not going to want to do that. If I were to do this again, and I came down here, I was going to about to do the second section. I'm going to put this on the inside. Check this out. I was thinking about it, and I was like, I'm going to be having rocks and stuff flying around inside of here. I don't want them hitting the welds and putting a lot of stress on it. It'd be stronger if this was on the inside. So... Right, so there, that's a lot stronger. That would take a lot of force to get this out. 
this, these little dinky welds have to fail for this to self-destruct. So I'm gonna keep mine like this on this side and put this one on the inside and see which one is better. Um, but anyway, I figured I'd mention it. It looks a little messy right now, but I figured I'd mention it in case you're building one. Yeah, do it from the inside. I don't know what I was thinking. a few adjustments but for the most part we're doing pretty good here guys so you could you could tell just by like this little pile all the dirt that's, that's all the out. dirt and we do have some fine stones in there but we have this stuff getting thrown out the other side and what else do we have to do? It was trying to jump uh, this way. So we're going to put yeah, some so rollers. Gonna, yeah, we're, like we're going to put a roller to prevent Here. it from jumping this way. And aside from that, pretty happy with it. Then we can really torque down. Um, see, if you if you put the idler too tight, it makes it want to jump this jump. way. It wants to yeah. jump up. Yeah, like what that. Meg's doing. Do that again so they can see. It wants to jump up. And yep. then that loosens this belt. Yeah. And it comes off the idler. So we need to have some kind of force down on it. And the other thing that when you throw a big pile in, it's stopping. Well, that's because the idler is not tight enough. Okay. Let me go get a scoop with the uh, with the tractor here. I'll get the scoop from the real area that we're interested in. And we'll try to process some. I'll put the loader at the end and then I'll show you the results of what comes out of the trauma with like, I don't know, five minutes of work here. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it.
here's what we ended up with. Just this is exactly what we're looking for. Nice rocks about the palm of your hand and, and smaller. Um, nice flat rocks, but it's filtering it out nicely and that will improve once the soil dries up. But we wanted to show you what it was doing. Yeah, it has um, a little bit of dirt right now in it, but, but once it's drier, it'll... I think we'll get great results with dry soil. Yeah. But for our first prototype, um, this thing is working great. I couldn't really ask it for much more. Um, areas of improvement, we need to add some, um, some other wheels to keep this thing in place so it doesn't hop around like this, what Meg was explaining. And also um, this idler, that will allow us to have more friction on this idler, which will have this belt tighter, and then it will be able to handle a heavier load. I see myself getting the tractor and making a little hopper or something like that, dumping a lot of dirt, and then it just automatically feeds into this thing and we'll have a big pile of rocks here at the end. So that's how I'm gonna use it. I'm not gonna be here with a shovel all day doing that, but that's the ultimate goal. Um, if you wanna see that, follow us along, and uh, we'll be doing a lot of this trommel in uh, future episodes, but Meg, I think it was a good success. Yeah, good job. I'm happy with it, I'm proud of it. Key. You are? Yeah. Ooh. No, I mean my hair. It keeps sticking to my face. Your hair looks awesome today. Thanks, sweetie. I did it for you. John's got to look good for his lady followers. Well, it just did it for Maddie and Carmen. Oh, oh wait, no. Ah! Stop. Well, I was right. Hey. Now, Good thing is we have some uh, snow tubes for our hamsters. We don't, we don't have hamsters. That was a bad joke. Dad joke. Bad joke. Yes, yeah, solid it rubber. Wasn't even a dad joke. Solid rubber tires are solid. Why is this so confusing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, wait a You're still wrong. What in the world? Because this way. There you go. Okay. Mm, I went to school. <laughs> Rest of the angles that time. You! <laughs> it's you! You told me to do it wrong.